You've fought long and hard for a Royal Commission. Do you believe one is at hand? Absolutely, I do. It's not there yet and I try not to get excited because so many things have happened. Uh, in the end, only the Prime Minister can call the Royal Commission. So uh, the motion that's being debated in the uh, Parliament at the moment is about calling for a Royal Commission. Even if that goes through, where you're not yet there, the Prime Minister has to stand up and call it. Scott Morrison says he favours a permanent commissioner to look at these issues. Uh, do you think that that might be a compromise here, that might be useful, or do you demand a, free, uh, you know, a temporary uh, freestanding Royal Commission? As the National Commissioner stands at the moment, it is rubbish. The position is untenable. We can't go looking into the future without investigating the past. We don't want to look at future suicides. There will be no investigation of past suicides. There is an absolute uh, uh, culture that is not correct in the ADF that needs to be called out. Um, and the Prime Minister is getting his advice from people that even their positions are untenable. Uh, we had the Chief of Defence call out that uh, he would teach his recruits how not to get raped in recent times. Uh, that is just archaic. We teach your troops not to rape. Uh, the culture is that um, if that sort of thing, if sexual assaults happen in defence, you will be medically discharged and your perpetrator will likely be promoted. The culture sucks. The National Commissioner is not going to do anything for that. Then we have people like the RSL president coming out last night saying, we don't need a Royal Commission because it's not a good way to make policy. Well, I say to him, your position is irrelevant. Your state president branches, they all want a Royal Commission. Your members want a Royal Commission. You are not speaking for anyone except your own ego and your own pay packet. We Julianne, need a Royal Commission. Yeah, Julianne, I wonder if you could tell me about your son David and what it is about his death that leads you to think a Royal Commission is needed and what could change? Sure, I'm unable to go into the details because that would, um, that would absolutely break me, but um, we, uh, we look at where he could have been helped. There are quite a few occasions within ADF where my son could have been helped, but for the culture. Um, uh, looking at, you know, the way he was treated when he lost his son, the way he was treated when he couldn't cope with... Uh, um, pulling out dead bodies out of Timor, uh, uh, sorry, out of the ocean. Um, and, and, and he was just left to deal with that. When he really broke, when he didn't get the help he need, he was admitted to hospital and, uh, and, and told that he was getting a med medical discharge and was leaving um, and, and was discharged from a hospital bed on a suicide attempt. After that, the ADF failed him. After that, DVA failed him when he asked for medical help. And they told him there was a six-month wait and he died within that six months. It's just terrible. And, and the numbers of young lives especially lost in this way, well, when I say especially, young lives primarily lost in this way, it is tragic. In Parliament today, as the motion was being debated, we heard from some MPs who are veterans themselves and they were very emotional. Here's yes. Liberal MP Phil Thompson. I don't want to bury any more people. I don't want any more mums, fathers, brothers, sons and daughters to bury their family members. I don't want to get a phone call at 1am and saying your mate's died. I wouldn't have to call my wife and say the same thing either. Because if it, it doesn't, the, the effect doesn't ever stop and the pain never will. Yeah, Julianne, we can see why you're saying that the, uh, the fight needs to go on because this has not been achieved yet. But from what you're saying, it's, it, it's not only counselling and support after people have served in the, in the Defence Forces, it's very much about what happens while they're in the Defence Forces. Absolutely. And, and just listening to all those people from both sides of Parliament talk today, it was very emotional, especially those that knew... Uh, what had happened. No, it's not just about mental health. A lot of people think it's just about transition uh, and the way we get out and jobs and that sort of thing. And while they are really important matters, that does not cover anything to do with those that actually suicide while they're still serving. Um, they don't have transitional issues or DVA issues. It is the culture in defence, how we treat them when they break down. We absolutely need to be investigating from recruitment uh, right through to the end of, of, of anybody's days. Julianne... We have to look after them forever. Yeah, congratulations on your bravery and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. OK, bye-bye.
Julianne Finney there, who uh, is dealing with an issue that too many people have had to deal with. And, look, there's a bit of Royal Commission fatigue in this country, but when you think about this one, it's essentially about finding out how we can best look after our veterans. Now, who deserves our support best more than people who have served this country in this way and people who continue to serve this country in this way? So I think of all Royal Commissions, it's one where there's a powerful argument because we do need to do better. There's an epidemic of suicides out of our defence community. Now, if you know someone in our defence community who needs support, please reach out to one of the organisations on your screen, including Open Arms, the Defence Family Helpline or Lifeline.